in the United States. Uh, they're in need of serious systematic reform. We are asking that the, the federal government comes in, the Department of Justice comes in and takes a heavy, uh, a conscious look at the, the policies and procedures that allow something like this tragedy to happen. This was a wellness call. It's beyond me to begin to understand what kind of police force responds to a wellness call with the equivalent of SWAT. Uh, this department and their officers uh, violated not only the rights of, of Tay Jefferson and her family, uh, but they just made common sense mistakes. They passed an open door. They failed to announce themselves. They passed a second open door. They failed to announce themselves. They creeped around the back of the apartment and entered a closed gate. They didn't have probable cause at this point from what the neighbor told them to even enter that property. They began creeping around and they created a deadly situation. The idea that they have blasted images of a firearm uh, across the internet is obscene. Of course, a family owns a firearm. Of course, firearms are used to protect individuals from predators. Uh, prowling about their property. That's only common sense. They created a deadly situation and they responded in a way that is not unique uh, to the city of Fort Worth. Uh, in the last six months, they've had 10 officer involved shootings, seven, um, seven officer involved deaths. That's more than most nations uh, for one, a single city in Texas. It represents a serious problem that must be addressed. So, of course, this family is calling for the firing of this officer. That's benign. That's the least we could we should expect. They're calling for this officer to be vigorously prosecuted, to be appropriately sentenced. Uh, that prosecution, the investigation, should be handled by someone other than the Fort Worth Police Department, uh, specifically the Department of Justice, the FBI. Or worst case scenario, the, the, the local sheriff's department, anyone other than the city of Fort Worth was clearly incompetent to investigate itself, should be called in. Uh, we expect this to happen immediately. This happened Saturday. Why this man is not in handcuffs right now is, is a source of continued agitation for this family and for this community, uh, and it must be addressed. In a moment, you'll hear from uh, Corey Hughes, uh, who is an, an activist and a member of the Fort Worth community, and then you'll hear directly from uh, the family of Tate Jefferson. Uh, just for the correct spelling of my name, it is C O R Y, last name Hughes, H U G H. Yes. The, the reality is I've had the un, unfortunate responsibility of sitting in front of these cameras and sitting next to families that have lost loved ones by the hand of, of police officers all too often. As a member of uh, the community of Fort Worth, as someone that has taken the responsibility to be a voice for my community, I want to set the record straight that we're not looking for a 30-day suspension. We're not looking for a slap on the wrist. We're not looking for what seems to be status quo is that the people that we hire to serve and protect us, when one of their own violates the community, it seems like they do more of trying to serve and protect their own. So what we're looking for is for this officer not only to be fired, but we're demanding that this officer be charged as well like the criminal that he is. It's a sad commentary in this day and age that someone could be sitting in their home playing a video game with a family member and not be safe. That when someone calls the police for a wellness check, that instead of them checking on how well she is, days later we're here talking about the fact that an officer took her life. It's unacceptable. We're demanding justice. We're demanding that the mayor and the city officials don't sweep this under the rug. We're not going to allow you to. This life mattered. This life mattered. This family matters. And we're demanding justice. And we're not going to wait. We demand justice now. Thank you.
All right, the next person to hear from uh, is going to be the brother of our of our Shadat Tayana Jefferson. Uh, and I'll allow him to introduce himself. My name is uh, Darius Carr. I am currently stationed in San Diego. I served my country for the last 12 years. In that time, I've been trained and taught the pre-planned responses to everything you do. Everything you're trained about, there's a, a way to do things. And when you don't do it the way you've been trained or you've been taught, you have to ask for that. You have been trained. You know better. So you have to answer for that. Not in your command, not in your department. Someone comes in and investigates the whole incident. Fort Worth PD cannot investigate themselves. You think they is allowed to do it? They should not be you well. This man murdered someone. He should be arrested. And we want to continue to echo the calls um, and be clear that this family is standing in solidarity, that Fort Worth needs to recuse itself from this, uh, from this investigation. And they need to bring in an outside agency. And they need to make sure this officer is treated like any other criminal suspect in our criminal justice system. Uh, the next person that you're going to hear from is uh, the sister of Amber. I'm sorry, the sister of Tay, and her name is Amber. I'm Amber Carter. I'm going to have to just flip this a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Amber Carter, I'm her, one of her older sisters. We're 11 months apart. We grew up together. Um, the last time I spoke to my sister was last Saturday. She came to the hospital in Plano where I was recovering from a major heart surgery. Um, she came and brought me food. She brought me in her cell phone. She talked about how this weekend actually was the weekend that she and my older sister were planning to take the boys to the fair and asked me what I want back, considering she knew I wasn't going to be able to walk the fair park. Um, my sister, uh, she, the relationship she has with my sons is indescribable. Uh, sometimes people think that they're her kids and not mine. She helped Zion every day to get ready for school because my mother wasn't capable of doing it. She wrote out a schedule so that he could be organized. She helped him understand that he had to be responsible for putting on his clothes, picking out his clothes, and getting ready on time to leave for the day. Um, those were things that my mom did for him. So she helped him become more independent and self-sufficient. My son, who was there to witness the event, he would think that you know, he would show some type of sadness or emotions. But the first time I actually got to see him and pick him up from a facility for children, the first thing he told me was he was sad. And I asked him, why was he sad? And he told me because the police had killed his, had shot his aunt. And at that time, I knew nothing about that. So he was the one who actually told me what, had, what happened. Um, but at this time, he's my motivation. He's my biggest encourager. In the middle of the night when I'm crying, he wakes up and tells me to breathe in my nose and out my mouth. He holds me. He hugs me. And these are the things I should be doing for him, but he's not reacting in that manner. He's helping me to be strong. And I believe that's because my sister had a big part in it. The next person that you're going to hear from 
she's prepared a statement. I'm allow her to come around. Her name is Ashley Carr. And she the older Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley Carr. I was Atatiana Jefferson's oldest sister. Um, I'm here to read a statement for the family so that we can all be on one accord. An arc of a moral universe is a long one, but it bends towards justice. Martin Luther King. Our family first would like to thank the thousands who called, who sent messages, who reached out via social media, offering words of encouragement and condolences. We appreciate your powerful solitude with us as we go through this unbelievable time of shock and sorrow. Secondly, our family would like you to know more about this beautiful soul, Tatiana Jefferson. She was a smart, ambitious, kind person with a nurturing spirit. She was a graduate of Xavier University with a bachelor's of science degree in mathematics, and I mean, that's me, in biology, and was committed to furthering her education. She was a hard, hard worker where her co-workers saw her as a person of being of a person of full integrity. She was loved, she loved her family so much that at the age of 28, she decided to move into our, our mother's home to help her as her health was declining. Honor, integrity, commitment, and service. These are the attributes of a Tatiana Jefferson. Any parents would be proud to call her a daughter. Any sibling would be proud to call her a sister. Any employer would be proud to call her an employee. Any neighborhood would be proud to have her as a neighbor. And any city would be proud to have her as a citizen. And yet, in the early mornings of October 11, 2019, she was simply going on along with her life, living a law-abiding citizen's peaceful life, and she was killed by a reckless act of a Fort Worth police officer. There is simply no justification for his actions. She was enjoying a life in her home where no one would have expected it to be her, her life to be in harm's way, especially not at the hands of a civil servant who had taken the oath to serve and protect. Our family now is asking the city of Fort Worth to exhibit the same characteristics of a Tatiana Jefferson, to be honorable when, they, when it comes to narrating the memory of this beautiful song to have integrity and bring the federal government in to investigate, to be committed to a swift and appropriate prosecution, serve the entire community of Fort Worth by training your officers to execute responses to appropriate situations. In closing, we demand justice for a Tatiana through an independent, thorough, and transparent process. The family of Atatiana Jefferson and the world eagerly awaits your response to this tragedy. It is imperative that your response bends towards justice. Thank you. Uh, you're next going to be listening to Ashley Carr, their older sister of 